you doing, bro? <laughs> very important because today we find out the fate and the future of the almighty AU Falcon. Today we're going to be doing a compression test on the AU but before we even start doing that I'm just going to quickly fix the chaser. We know exactly what's wrong with it. If you saw the last video we found out that the wastegate actuator rod had fallen off the wastegate flap. So that means the chaser wasn't able to build any boost at all. We've also got to put everything back together. j pipes got to go back on. The wiring for the solenoids got to go all back on and we're going to roll this car out before we figure out what we're going to do with the AU field. I will show you what's wrong with the chaser. See if I can get the camera stuck in the little crevice that we need to get it to so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Oh my God. Oh, I shall show you the problemo. So can you guys see that little rod? I'm gonna circle it on the screen. That rod slips onto the wastegate flap and you can see that it's just just on there so there's a little bit of a bend we need to put a little clip there so that it's connected up and then we should be good to go off camera what I was doing was using the air compressor right there to spray into the wastegate actuator vacuum line so I was able to move that rod ever so slightly so I could slip the rod back onto where it's supposed to go let's see how we go should be pretty simple I'm gonna use a cotter bin to tie it up chaser should be driving today We have everything on, the J-pipe's all connected and everything at the bottom is all nice and snug. We've got the cotter pin down on the wastegate actuator rod. I also shorten this pipe so it's not going to hit there anymore. It's got way more wiggle room. How sick is that? It's looking, looking amazing. Um, we're going to give this thing a start. Hopefully we hear the turbo spin. If we don't, then we have a problem. Fuck's sake. Battery's all connected. <laughs> oh, battery's dead. Oh, oh, the battery's dead, boys. Got to charge it up. God damn it. Two hours later. Guys, we're all good. Also got the boys here again. Density. Density. <laughs> Wasn't dosing before, now it is. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Keen, very keen. Chaser is back. Now, it seemed like it was just that race gate rod that was causing the problem, but it's all on there. Chase is all good. J pipe is back on. So happy with it. Sounds so good. Performs so good. It wasn't PG what I told you guys before, was it? It was not PG. Yeah, don't don't repeat it, bro. Don't repeat it. <laughs> this chaser, bro, does does things for me. It does things for me, boys. Okay, we're about to compression test the AU. We actually took it around the block to warm it up a little bit because apparently that's what you need to do to expand the rings a tiny bit. Uh, massive shout out to, of course, Turbo Tristan. He's been lending us so many tools and stuff. He lent me his compression gauge tool because our one is absolute dog shit. Yeah, what we're gonna do is see what uh, see what compression we have a Reno. Six cylinders we need to test. Hopefully they are all good. If they're not, things are getting yeeted. So I also wanted to mention that you guys have been trying to help out heaps in the comments and I really appreciate that. But a lot of you guys don't know what I've actually done to the car. So I do have in fact a 3.45 diff. So it's a 3.45 to one uh, XR6 diff. And it's also had a fuel filter. It's also had a fuel pump done as well. So the thing has been serviced. I've also done new plugs as well. I haven't done ignition leads or ignition coil thing in Majigo. So that could potentially be the culprit, but I've done a lot of work to it. So it's none of the fueling stuff. It's not the, the diff. As well that's why we're doing compression tests so it's uh, very easy to compression test these engines firstly what you want to do I mean you guys probably saw the process before because we tried to but failed you want to remove the fuel pump relay relay fuel here's the fuel pump relay Peter's gonna give it a crank to see if it doesn't start it shouldn't start there might be a little bit of fuel left in there but the pumps not gonna run so it shouldn't start keep turning it keep going Ah, uh, stop. Yeah, it's mint. Uh, perfect. No more fuel. Fuel deleter. So, we're just gonna take out the spark plug again. 
Yo, spark plug is out. Why does it look like it's running lean? What the hell? Oh, maybe that was because of the, um, oh, what the hell? My plug is literally white. Can someone explain that? I actually don't understand why it's white. All right, so we're gonna compression test cylinder number one. Let's see how we go. All right, go for it. All right, stop. Looks like we have about 225. So that's 220. That's a lot. Yeah, that's heaps. Uh, this one's 200. So two, 200. Cylinder two, 200 PSI. All right, stop. Cylinder number three, 200. Stop. 230. All right, stop. 230 as well. Add stop. Also 230. So I'm actually unsure if I was doing that right because we didn't have all the spark plugs unplugged. And whenever I've heard a proper compression test, that's the proper sound it makes when we took off the all the plugs. So we're gonna just go ahead really quick and just run a compression test on all the cylinders again uh, while the plugs are out and just see if they're different. All right, cylinder one, Peter. <laughs> Yep. 2.30. Stop. I think the engine needs charging, but cylinder number two is 2.20. So my compression seems good. 2.20? Yeah, I'm not going to bother doing the rest because we already did three without all the plugs yeah. on, did we? And everything was at 2.30. Sounds good when it's the AE Falcon feels faster. Well, last time 100%. You, it, you had 130 kilo paperweight sitting on the. Nah, dude. Just seen, but Let's replicate. I'll quickly go one it. side around the block. I'll leave you here again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bit. dude, I don't understand what's going on. Maybe because I plugged the ignition lead on better? I don't know. But it's, it feels way faster. I don't know. Might be, might be placebo. I'll get you to record. Yeah. Stop it, yeah. Let's have a start. This is first gear. That kind of felt better. Right? That kind of felt better. Especially in first, it sort of like moved me a bit more. Yeah, dude. Mm. I don't know. I'll, I'll turn around and I'll give it a punch again. Yeah. yeah. You ready? First skill? Alright, let's go. I don't know. That felt better. Really? I don't know. I Maybe your optimism like came up. But it felt faster. Alright, it's weird. Alright, I'll do a second gear here. You ready? Three, two, one. I don't know. I don't know. There's yeah. only one way to find out, and that's Ray Snacky, but I still feel like I'm gonna lose against him. I think yours is still slower. <laughs> I was like, why? Why are you laughing all of a sudden? I was like, oh. It's hard to know what to do with the AU Falcons, considering that the compression seems like it's okay. So I'm just going to start doing things that I think are just regular service items for a car that's done 300,000 kilometers. So I'm going to order like an ignition pack and I'll probably replace that um, when it comes. Anyway, what we're going to do for the rest of today's video is refit my center console. You can currently see my center console is entirely apart. I don't have anywhere to store my phone, anywhere to store my goods, my drinks, no cup holders. In order to clear the hydraulic handbrake, I'm gonna need to do some chopping. So what we're gonna do is start chopping this all apart. I've already taken everything apart. We're gonna delete the rear vents. So this is the rear vent uh, passageway, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just chop it off here and try to plastic weld up some of this so it's all sealed up and we only have front vents. As for here, we're gonna have to cut out probably a section of the console about there. We're gonna try to cut off as minimal as possible to make it look as standard as. And so we can also retain this little cubby where you can also check your phone too. See how we go. I can sort of see the outline where the center console sits. So I'm gonna try base it off this because we're not gonna be able to fit, fit it on and then cut um, obviously because this thing's just gonna be blocking it the whole time. So hopefully we can make it look pretty decent because yeah, I don't want it to look bad.
I've failed miserably. I'm gonna just start chopping the console. <laughs> Okay, so here's a little update on how much we've had to cut to get this center console in. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we've had to, I could have gone a little bit closer, but obviously I was just eyeballing it. There's no real way that you can do this, but I've had to chop this whole section out here. So there's none of the center console uh, gonna be here. So this is all gonna be exposed, unfortunately. Maybe I can stick it back on after, me, after I'm done, but I don't know yet. Um, I've also found out that I've put the manual trim around. And if you guys own Falcons and have a manual one, you can understand my pain right now. Because this is flipped, it won't go on. Maybe I, hang on, I'm confused now because this looks right. <laughs> Wait, the low on petrol did. <laughs> bro, stop fucking with my dash, bro. <laughs> Why have you got it out, bro? Why are you taking your dash out? Because I needed. Well, bro, what the fuck have you done, Nathan? What's wrong with it? Oh, peeling. Welcome, welcome to peeling. Oh, okay. What are you doing, bro? Are you trying to roll back your kilometers? Unfortunately, you can't. It's a digital kilometer. Fortunately, you cannot. <laughs> This here, we'll do a full circle. Nathan, I'm going to <laughs> a full circle. Bro. Nathan, stop. <laughs> what difference does it make? It's not breaking it. probably fucking the springs inside. The They're springs not, inside? Not, it's making a full fucking circle. Oh, stop moving, you're fucking it. Shut up. <laughs> I need to replace an LED inside. Okay guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Just kidding, we're all done now. And have a sass of this. Oh my God, everything's all back in. I have even included some of the trim pieces that were missing from my car. So I had these just chilling from uh, the AU Falcon Ute that we took the T5 out of for Naki's car. And I've also put in a little pad there as well. So we don't have screws exposed. This all works. I'm so happy with this. So I'll show you how much we need to cut off. I need to chop all of this side off as well. I wasn't able to stick it on without cutting it, otherwise it would just hit the, uh, the Wilbur inline cylinder right here. And I reckon I could have chopped less of this off to make it more flush, but like I said, you sort of have to eyeball it. Um, you could probably do some measurements to make it mint. I just wanted to get it in nice and quick, but that did take me about an hour and a half, two hours anyway. So there you guys go. Everything's all done. And yeah, so as for the compression on the AU Falcon, we'll see what happens when we do the ignition coils or whatever you call them. And we'll see how it runs after that. And if it runs fine, then looks like the intake is fine. It doesn't really make sense why it would be down in compression. These engines are known to go to about 800,000 to a million kilometers every day. It's not hard for an intake to do. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen after we put that coil in. Well, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Falcon is all done. Look how bright it is here. Center console back in. Heaps of stuff left to go on the Falcon. We just got the ignition packs today in today's current time. So I'm gonna be installing them and seeing if that actually fixes the Falcon in the next video. But thank you so much for watching and sticking around for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Like it if you liked it. Go to bakerspec.com if you wanna cop some merch and I'll see you all in the next one. See ya. Alex wrote, I love Pisco. <laughs> you can't see it, but I love Malinky Pisco.